Hello everyone, uh, whoever watching this video and this lecture, welcome to my class. And as you can see, the topic of this lecture is categorical data analysis using SPSS. Well, in this analysis, I will show you how to do it a real data, which is categorical. And to start this class, I want to tell you that you should download the data files I have provided you. And I also provided you an interpretation files where you can learn how to deal with those data. And I want you to follow this video and do the same things at the same time so that you can learn effectively from this video. And I will not explain that much statistical uh, theories or topics that I may mention here. And I hope that you have a little bit of basic. If you don't have, that's all right. This video is actually focusing to deal with SPSs. So the topic I'm going to discuss in this video is like at first research questions as I am providing you data that means uh, the data the data analysis, the goal of doing data analysis is to set up research and to do a research you first need to set up a questions all right and then I'll talk about like for collecting data you need to set up a questionnaire how you can set up those questions and we try to understand from these questions how we can do the analysis and complete our goal to analyze the data, right? And then moving on, I will describe how to collect the data and enter the data in SPSS. And then the most important analysis part is like in your analysis where we will deal with like frequency table graphs by using SPSS and by weird analysis for like cross table, chi square test and the most important thing is like binary logistic model. This is a very broad topic to discuss, so I will discuss just a little bit basic. I feel that uh, I need to arrange another session for describing logistic model. And yeah, moving on that, let's first talk about research hypothesis. Before, I want to tell you what is the research questions here. Guys, I am providing you data, and from the data you can see that this is about like preferring particular telecom organizations in Bangladesh. Like in our country, we have six or seven organizations as a telecom operator. That means which we use to make a phone call or maybe like for using the data, using our data connection, okay? So yeah, and from that six or seven operator, which operator most people are using and what is the reason and like what are the multidimensional problems in those telecom system and what are the necessary actions to take to overcome our those problems all right so this is what we're going to discuss in this video and then the research hypothesis another important part here i'm not going to explain what really hypothesis is and i hope that you have a little bit of idea just assume that here we're going to test this by using our data all right we want to test a statement where we said there is no association that means no relation between a study variable like age education income services and facilities provided by a telecom organization and preferences of particular telecom operator we are trying to reject this statement and we will try to prove that there is an association between like i am using say airtel airtel is a telecom operator i am using this telecom operator and why I am using this operator what is my age my education status and what's my income and what are the services they provided because of which I feel satisfied that is the goal to um, do this analysis all right so yeah moving on that um, and then the objective of our research almost the similar things like you can examine the current position of all organization which one is the best and what are the reasons for that and to establish the basis of preferences for a particular organization like i said and then to verify the deficiencies of government telecom organization this is also important part and number four is that to find the required actions to overcome the existing problems that is how you can set up an objective of a research okay and then now let us talk about the questionnaire so the first thing you need to do is to collect the data right so to collect the data you must set up a question so that people can answer and then you have to enter these questions into the data file okay so let's move on 
So as you can see, this is the data file I have provided you and I have just opened it in SPSS and also the questionnaire. So now let's talk about the questionnaire. At first, I mentioned like ID number. You should have an ID number so that you can, you know, how you can uh, read the data well all right and then the name gender this is demographic information like division where they live and what is their age range educational qualification you can see all the variable that is all the questions have some category right i'm asking your profession but i'm giving you like four options you have to choose one so this is what categorical variable is so every question here is a variable what, why I'm talking why I am calling it as a variable because as you can see every question has multiple options for example if I say whether age is a variable or not as you can see age may vary individuals to individuals it is not a fixed value that is why I'm calling it as a variable now what are you talking about categorical variable okay moving on that as you can see in the general part we asked the people that do you have a mobile phone well to have a sim card to have a telecom operator they should have a mobile phone right now if they say yes then we ask them okay what is your current service provider that means what are the telecom operator they are using they're using airtel bungling citysol citysol teletalk rovi ground phone or others so if they choose a particular options then i can judge that what are their why are they preferring this particular telecom operator like i'm asking a lot of questions like which operators connection do you use as your main connections for how long you are using this why did you change your past provider that means they had a operator or not before using current operator which is a very important issue i'm asking a lot of questions like that and then like network connectivity you can understand that in different countries different areas they may not have a good network connection which is the most important things to have a uh, sim card right so i asked them like how good or bad their connections and we can ask a lot of questions related to that uh, like how often does your call drop during conversation and also the billing operation how much they charge and how my service they provided their customer care how good or bad so we can ask like 89 questions like that all right okay now before showing entering the data i'm going to explain some of the basic that you need to know like what is the difference between the categorical variable and quantitative variable i'm not going to explain that much about quantitative variable but i will explain uh, more about categorical so here i am showing you an example of age say well I'm asking questions to the people you have a questions like what is your age say you are allowing people to write a number whatever they want some say 20 some say 15 some say 36 but if you tell people that you have five options number one is for 0 to 10 number two is for 10 to 18 number three is for 18 to 30 in that way they can choose only one option so you have actually five category now age is a variable as I told you that age may vary right now if you if you ask them by the categorized way then you can call it as a categorical variable and if you are allowing them to enter any number then it is quantitative variable all right and now let's discuss some more about categorical variable there are a lot of types but i will specifically discuss like ordinal variable and ordinal variable so here i indicate two variable one is for gender and other is for education level so for gender you have two category male or female now is it important that you have to provide a rank like male have to come first or female have to come first there is no such requirement right but for education level here the ranking or the ordering is very important like for one, you can say high school, for two, you can say BS, for three, you can say MS, for four, you can say PhD, or maybe for one, you can say PhD, then MS, then BS, then high school. All right. But you cannot put PhD in the middle as it is in higher ranking, right? So for this variable, ordering or ranking is very important. Then we can call it ordinal variable. Okay. And for spaces there are two variable types which is very common one for numeric and other for string so numeric variable contain all the numbers and a suitable for numeric calculations 
okay but a string variable may contain letters and numbers and characters like if you ask people okay write whatever you like about this organization then may they write a sentence so this is characters right you cannot import it in easy way so you have to denote it as a string variable and remember even in categorical variable we have to convert it in numeric way all right and then let us discuss some uh, some common topic like what is population it's statistics we have to deal with the population uh, it's not like the usual way let's say if I ask you that what is the population of Bangladesh you will say 16 color or 18 color close to like that all right now in our statistics population is not exactly like that population is the collection of all individuals that is included in our study that is all the people from ho from which you can take the data so here the population is all mobile phone users in Bangladesh so that is like nine or ten crore mobile phone users now can you ask every single one that which mobile phone you is why you are using this operator you cannot take data from every individual so right so what you can do you can collect a sample which represent the whole population and you have to remember that in our, in our data we actually collect like 906 samples okay now let me show you how can you enter the data in SPSS here you can see the SPSS uh, software here there is two screen available like for variable view you can see this screen and here another screen for data view all right here you can input the data and here you mention that uh, the variable name or I should say like for let me just type the sum of this data like for question number one we have ID number all right and if I name this questions then this is a variable this question is one kind of variable all right now if you can just name it like question number one then the type and as I said the type will always be numeric even it is a uh, quantitative uh, you can also choose a string for uh, some rare cases so here I choose the numeric option and another thing is that the only variable here which is quantitative is ID okay all other variable is like categorical okay so here in ID another thing is like white decimal this is not such important uh, if you put like two in decimals then when you put the number like 2.235 cc it will take only two values after uh, the decimals and here in the level you can define the variable in details or I just mentioned the questions name here let me just write I D and values this is very important for the categorical variable but as it is quantitative you can avoid it and nothing is missing I will show it on another video while I will try to show missing data analysis this is not so important here and column you can avoid align avoid measure this is also very important for categorical you can add nominal or ordinal all right and here it is quantitative so you have to add a scale variable so this is a way you can add the variable that means add the questions and then you can just type the data number now let's say you are collecting data from 900 people all right that means you have 900 id say for fast people you have id number one then id number then id number two then three then four then five that's how it will go on i hope you can understand what is going on another thing is that let me type another variable say let me type variable number three so that is for variable view and let me write questions three and then add type numeric and then the label name say gender now at values you can add the category okay here you can see two category male and female so value one level name male okay then you can just click add and then value two level name female then you can just click add and then click OK then your category is done now what is gender what kind of variable it is nominal variable all right so here we mentioned the type and now you can just type the data say for the first people for the first people let me find it okay for the first people whose ID number is one say say he is a male person 
and then product number two say she's a female then two that is how you're gonna write this all right and here is an option say here if you click a okay you can see the value levels that means you can see the category then if you see one then you can see it in like numeric way all right so here is a little bit of basic of SPSS. now let me go to the analysis now what is invariant analysis okay invariant analysis means when you have to deal with only one variable that means one single questions all right now how you can describe the invariant variable or in invariant analysis you can draw a frequency table for the graphical analysis you can draw a pie chart or bar diagram so let us do that for the data i have provided you here is the data which i have provided you and let me find in the interpretation files in your analysis make sure that you follow this analysis and do the same thing i'm doing right now all right okay so here is your analysis so for the question number seven that means what's your operator okay here we draw a frequency table and then comment on those table and then we draw a bar diagram and then for another variable we draw a frequency table and also another bar diagram then we make a comment actually the comment is same for the diagram and the frequency table okay so let us sh let me show you that how can you do this analysis say you have to go to the analyze option and then click the descriptive statistics and then go to the frequencies all right for doing univariate analysis only remember that and only for categorical variable frequencies and uh, let me reset that and then you have to find the variable which one is related to your research here you have a lot of variables lot of questions but ev every variable is not really related to your research so find the most important one okay so for question number seven we have like current service provider you just need to select it and then here click the display frequency tables all right and then go to the charts options you can choose either bar chart or pie charts so let me choose bar charts for this and then uh, you can select either frequencies or percentages i love to select percentages so then select continue and then you can directly select ok to get the output now, if you want to get the SPSS syntax, as SPSS is not like a programming languages, it is a package where you can, where you can call the code as like a syntax. Okay. So if you select the paste option at first, then you get a syntax. If you if you select all the syntax and you click here or the here, you can run the code or the syntax. Then you can get the output. All right so okay so here we get the output now as you can see here it is a frequency table for the variable you selected and is a bar diagram for the variable is selected all right now you can do a little bit of edit of this diagram okay say if you double click this and there is an option you will find to edit this like you can show you can select uh you can select the options to show the data level yeah here in the blue option if you click this then you can see that there is an option where you can where you can customize everything okay so if i close this then you can see that in the diagram there is a data levels like for airtel that means 10.71 percent people use airtel operator which is the maximum one Grameen phone 51.6 percent people well this is not an authentic data i'm just using this data to show you uh to understand you to let you know that how you can analyze a categorical data okay all right so in this data Grameen phone is the maximum user now you can interpret it and make a comment on this in this way that how many percentage for every individual operator okay i will show you one more way to draw this graph in more like more interactive way okay by using excel 
Now how I'm gonna do this, what I will do is that open an Excel file. Here I open an Excel file. What I will do, I will copy this frequency table, okay? You need to copy this frequency table and then just you need to copy it here in the Excel file. I need to delete some uh, some column which is not really important for our graph, like cumulative percentages. I just click Control and minus option to remove it easily and valid percent and here we have another column which we'll need to remove yeah so i'm getting the appropriate one okay now if you select it select it and then go to the insert option and then select bar diagram or maybe pie diagram any kind of uh, diagram you like which is which which may possible for this data as i mentioned now if you choose this look this graph looks better right now you can choose the data level also you can add a title like you can add the variable name current service provider or right, then you can design this okay so in Excel this graph looks much more better right now you can also you can also draw a pie diagram which is more attractive I believe okay here if you draw a pie diagram like this now you can do interpret from this pie diagram very easily I hope you understand this innovative analysis you can you can similarly do this for any variable you want go to the analyze go to the descriptive go to the frequencies and select any variable you want okay and then if you click paste option you can find a space syntax but if you can directly select okay and then you can find the output all right then you can edit the data so that's all for univariate analysis Okay guys, so now I will discuss bivariate analysis and bivariate analysis means when you have to deal with two variables. Alright, for univariate we use only one variable, okay? And for univariate we use to display the data, we use frequency table, but here we will use cross table or like contingency table. It is similar, okay? And for graphical analysis we can use bar diagram the most important thing in categorical in bivariate analysis is doing a hypothesis testing and by showing the association between two variables okay so let us open the data file and interpretation file to understand so as you can see in the interpretation file at first, we find the association between profession of responder and connection they used. That means, say, you are using a gramming phone or you are using maybe CD cell now. What is your profession? Is there any relation between your profession and the connection you are using? So now you can show that by using a cross table and by drawing a bar diagram and most importantly, doing the hypothesis testing. Now, look at the null hypothesis as i said before that our goal is to test this statement all right and if we can reject this null hypothesis here now then we can say that there is an association between professor and main connection for this analysis we can use two hypothesis test methods like chi-square testing and fisher's exact test there are also further uh, methods which we will describe when we learn advanced analysis like it may vary for nominal or ordinal all right so now for chi-square and Fisher's exact test there is only way to draw the decision there may be another way but we will concentrate on one way is by using the p value all right because this is the easiest way and you can understand it easily so before measuring it by p-value you have to set a significance level that means how much error you will accept i will not describe that much it means that if this value okay this is p-value and if this value is 
less than 0 0.05 that means less than significance level then we can say that null hypothesis is rejected or null hypothesis cannot be accepted that means alternative hypothesis is true okay so it means that there is association between profession and main connection so our goal is to find this and then draw the conclusion by using this p value all right so this is how you can do the vibrate analysis now let me show it in spss so for this you have to go to analyze describe to cross tables and then here i already selected it uh, you can just find it from here and click this this and this uh, so you include one variable in rows and one variable in columns okay and then you can also select display clustered bar charts okay and then go to the statistics here you can select chi and then here you can just click ok to get the output so here you can see the output of this vibrated analysis you can see a cross table chi squared test result where you can see that p value is less than 0 0.05 that means the null hypothesis is rejected so there is an association between these two variables and you can see the cross table and you can interpret it like you can see from the job holder uh, number of user for bangla link is like 64 all right so this is where you can define it interpret it and you can also define it from the bar chart which is actually for two variables previously we draw a pie chart and a bar uh, chart which is actually for one variable where we have uh, uh, in the at x-axis we have like variables then we have a frequency but here we have two variables one and you can also just edit that a little bit to determine just a double click here it is uh, now you can see the frequency or the person whatever you need this is way you can actually uh, make your graph better and also you can just uh, copy the free, uh, cross table in the Excel and draw the graph in Excel that I previously showed but this is for uh, like two variables you have to remind that and that is what like vibrate analysis but another very important par part is like there is an alternative test for Fisher's exact test there are also some advanced uh, tests uh, which I will not show here I believe uh, this is uh, good for understanding or doing uh, for a simple analysis all right so yeah for alternative of chi square test there is a test which named fisher's exact test okay so fisher's exact test is also another way to association between two variables when you have a small cell sizes okay expected value less than five and and there are actually two conditions like when the sample size is small and and uh, expected cell size less than five there is a uh, there is also another point which i didn't mention here as it not that much perfect like more than 20 percent cell if more than 20 percent cell uh, expected cell sizes less than five then you should go for fisher's exact test so as you can see here in this chi square test we have like nine cell that means 32 percent cells have expected less than five so here you can use features exact test also if uh if you think that guys if you think that uh for features exact test p value is greater than 0 0.05 then you can accept the null hypothesis all right and and in this analysis that i provided i didn't do any features exact test uh I, you have to do it by yourself I'm just showing it uh, so that you can uh, do it by yourself. Let me get back to the data. Again, what you need to do, you need to go to the analyze, descriptive statistics, cross tables, and previously it was given. So you just need to add here exact test. All right. And if you click continue and then OK, then you will find the output. 
So here you can see the output. There is just a little bit change in the chi square test. There is one more test added, like Fisher's exact test. So from this analysis, you can just uh, delete this table and add this table. Okay, and interpret it by using the Fisher's exact test p value. All right. So here you can see that the p value is also like 0 0.000. That means there is no change in the comment all right that means null hypothesis is again rejected so yeah that is how you can do any kind of bivariate analysis that i provided here just practice it and i hope that by practicing again and again you can improve yourself well the basic idea is always same remember that it may happen that you have you are finding some difficulties uh to get the to interpret the output or maybe you don't understand the concept but you just follow the procedure i hope it will be okay so the last topic i have in this class is binary logistic model well that's a very broad topic logistic model i'm not going to explain that much i'm just giving you a little bit idea because i will create another session for logistic model because to explain logistic model you need to understand some of the terms like what is ors what is ors ratio so I'm just giving you an example. There are a lot of assumptions, but one of the assumptions or condition is that to fit a logistic model. Well, first of all, tell you uh, let me tell you that any statistical model is basically used for prediction. All right. Previously, I show you how to create graph. I show you how to draw hypothesis test. You can just tell that okay, there is an association, but you cannot tell that how close or how strong the association, or you cannot predict uh predict a variable by using other variable or you cannot see the impact of a set of variables for one of variable here you can find that all right so in the binary logistic model at every model that you have to find which one is dependent variable and which other is independent variable say for example there is a variable i mentioned like having cancer yes or no now Having cancer can depend on a person's age or like smoking, gender. It can also depend on many other variables like age group, maybe blood group, maybe having other disease. So I just mentioned here three variables. Now, which variables are independent? Age, smoking, gender. These are the variables which is independent and having cancer is dependent. You have to determine that to fit a model. All right. And here the dependent variable should be a categorical variable independent variable should be categorical uh, can be categorical can be quantitative and if it follows this way then you can only fit a logistic model and for binary logistic model there are only two categories like yes no similarly like that you can all if there is only two category then you can only fit that otherwise you have to fit another model like there is ordinal logistic model multinomial okay so we will describe or we'll explain that later now in this example let me show that how you can find the impact of like age smoking and gender for having cancer say a person is a smoker or not okay you can find it from this variable now by fitting a model you can say that a person who is not a smoker okay or a person who is a smoker how many chances or how more likely he or she is to have cancer compared to the person who are not a smoker and also a male person how what is the chances of having a cancer for a male person compared to the female person okay you can describe it by using a term odds we will explain that later so this is how a uh, binary logistic model works so guys, this is all for this session. If you like my YouTube channel and you can just subscribe it. I hope you like this session that I have taken in uh, by using Zoom. And a lot of people arranged in this session, though we have a little bit of technical issues. I hope that we I can uh, arrange some more session and we'll upload more videos for you guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching.